So please give him a warm, warm Dreamforce welcome, Mr. Bennett and Dart. Welcome, Bennett. Thank you, Jody. Hi, everybody. You having fun? Yeah? So you got some beer. That's good. I'm, I'm going to be there in a minute. Hey, so I'm not going to take up a lot of your time. We'll talk a little bit about integration. Um, how many of you guys uh, use a cloud system today in your business, right? How do you integrate that to the rest of your business to make it work? How do you share data back and forth, right? So it's a, it's a bigger issue than in the past. You know, in the past, we, uh, we built systems in silos, but they were behind our four walls, right? And so we had a lot more control over those systems and the interfaces of those systems and the point-to-point -point integration of those systems, right? Integration wasn't really a top priority, it was a necessity, but it wasn't a burning platform, right? And, um, you know, it, it tended to get pretty costly. A lot of times it was done with custom code and, uh, and other kind of heroics uh, to, to get those integration points completed, right? So in, in comes change. And the environment that we're all here today is driven by the cloud. And the ability to have applications that sit not in your data centers, but somewhere else that really doesn't really matter to you where, they, where it is. What matters to you is to be able to get that information and use it combined with the other information you have in your business, right? So the cloud wasn't even really on most IT agendas even five years ago, right? It has really come on strong recently. And so in comes a new class of applications, what is affectionately called iPaaS by Gartner, all right? And so it's a platform but it's an integration platform. And some of the things that you know, I've seen in, in my career, coming from you know, cron jobs and ABAP code out of SAP to get the data into a CSV file to load it into a data warehouse, um, those things are really, really ancient. But it was only 10, 15 years ago that that was a commonplace. So now we have applications, their sole purpose is to help us integrate the business. Some here that uh, we, we, uh, we, we leverage a lot. I'll talk a little bit about some of the applications, some of the use cases that we've seen. So, you know, historical issues around integration, right? It, it often was a lower priority, and in large system projects, large implementations, integration was often left till the end. That means uh, once we have the implementation done and it's in production, then we start thinking about, well, where can we use this information that we're collecting? Uh, do we need to connect our Salesforce information to our SAP payable system or receivables to send out invoices, right? So these are all problems that are now sort of in the front, right? You have to deal with this up front in your roadmap when you add new systems, add new processes, What's the integration implications of that, right? Point-to-point -point methods solve tactical issues, but often break in the long term, cause more reuse, have to go back and recode, and change, right? So short-term unplanned efforts are what happens in that environment, and then the cost goes up, right? So what are some of the things in this next generation that we should be thinking about, right? So there are a lot of these lightweight inter integration frameworks, a couple of them, as I just showed you some of the logos on a previous slide, where you can go in and use these to help get information. Some of them are in the cloud. The orchestration layer may be in the cloud, um, and the engines may be on, on, on site. So you have to kind of think about which one makes sense for the type of integration that you're doing. Centralized governance, <clears throat> that's a big one. Being able to actually look at a single console and have a good idea of what your integration strategy is. A lot of them today are cloud-based. Standardized inf interfaces, they're using REST in some of these today, right? And so being able to standardize around a, 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 a type of an interface, a type of an API that you know that other systems are programmed to, right? And then last but not least, being able to automate that using a business process view, because in the, in the end, the business process drives the integration need. The systems do not drive the integration need. It's the process you're trying to work through. 
So here's some examples of things and some considerations that you might want to think about, right? So in terms of data flow, is it on demand, real time, or periodic? What is the periodicity of the data flow that you are required in this particular integration, right? What are the loads? Is it transactional or is it bulk? Do you have to do it, you know, onesie twosie, or can you do it all in one lump sum? Where is the or orchestration? Can the orchestration be in the cloud? Does it need to be on premise, right? Do you need heavy duty orchestration or do you need something a little more lightweight that is more advantageous to be in the cloud? And then transformations in flight. Are they simple point to point? You're just taking data and you're moving it from one place to the next? Or in flight, do you need to make changes to that data in order to get it to its resting place in the right format, right? Or are you changing currency types? Are you doing date transformations? Things like that, right? And then in the data warehouse world, are you taking, keeping track of slowly changing dimensions? Those types of transformations. And then the architecture, is it one-to-one, end-to-one, -one, or end-to-end, -end, right? So I, there's a lot of different considerations you need to make, and that is why it's so important to do that up front, right? Have an architecture strategy that includes integration. So I'll leave you with a couple of examples, right? Here's one that's a CRM example. It's really a consolidation of multiple separate P&Ls on different systems, right? Using, uh, in this case, uh, cast iron from IBM, right? And being able to translate not just the data, but in many cases, the currency, putting it into a single currency, right? Timestamps, and uh, in some cases, the, the language, right? Delivered in eight weeks to a Salesforce instance here now, at the bottom, that is a read-only refresh reporting instance. Here's another one that uses some existing kind of current technology, right? So, social media, by right? taking leads from Salesforce. When somebody likes your, your Facebook page as a company, what do you do with that, right? Do you mine it? Do you go and check it against your Salesforce records to see if they're a current customer or a new customer? And then do you insert a new customer record? Do you email them? All of this can be automated, right, with the right integration framework. That's all integration. And some business logic and some process flows, right, around that. So in short, make sure that you think about integration up front and not as an afterthought, right? Hub and spoke, if it's a large implementation, is, is often the right way to look at it. So you have a hub where you can change, interchange as systems change on the outside and not point to point. Right? So, so with that, I'll leave you, and we'll do the drawing, and Jody will come back up. We have a lot more presentations. There's a ton of subject matter experts out here in the audience that can help you. All these folks from NTT Group, ready to take your questions. So with that, Jody, you're up.